Hello, I'm journalist and comedian James Mullinger. Almost 10 years ago, I left London, England and moved to St. John, New Brunswick. Since then, my stand-up career has taken me to just about every town and city in Atlantic Canada, which, let's face it, has provided plenty of material. But I've also come to realize that this place is special and, crucially, underappreciated. So my wife Pam and I started a magazine, The Maritime Edit, to celebrate the natural beauty of the region and the incredible spirit of the people here. Here on The Maritime Edit's Atlantic Edition, I've had the pleasure of meeting some of Atlantic Canada's most interesting and dynamic people and learned what drives and inspires them and heard what they love about this place that we're all so proud to call home. Now I'm utterly delighted to be back on the road for a third and final tour of inspiring conversations with a whole new crop of fascinating Atlantic Canadians. Today I'm heading to Moncton, New Brunswick to chat with one of the true forefathers of East Coast comedy, Marshall Button. Best known for his internationally renowned character Lucien, the northern New Brunswick blue-collar philosopher who Peter Zowski called a national treasure. Marshall Button has been an actor, comedian, writer and director, creating and performing comedy across New Brunswick, Canada and the world for decades to critical acclaim and the delight of his audiences. But he's not just a performer. He also co-founded the Hubcap Comedy Festival and has spent years as an artistic director and artist in residence at the Capitol Theatre. In short, he's a career builder who spent much of his time supporting and creating opportunities for other performers and comedians in New Brunswick, including me. Marshall Button put New Brunswick comedy on the map, and I can't wait to chat with him about life, comedy, and Lucien. I'm James Mullinger, and this is Atlantic Edition. I'm on my way to meet a person who I admire greatly and someone who I owe a lot to as a New Brunswick based comedian and that's my friend and mentor Marshall Button, the patron saint of New Brunswick comedy. And in addition to being arguably the most successful and well-known comedian in the province, he's also made it his lifelong mission to provide opportunities to other artists, including myself. When I moved here in 2014, I didn't know anyone, but meeting Marshall and his business partner, Robert Gallant, changed everything. They booked me for the Hubcap Comedy Festival, and then Marshall helped me craft a routine that has become a staple of my set for many years. I can't wait to chat to Marshall about his career highlights, how he created his iconic blue-collar philosopher, Lucien, and what's left on his bucket list on stage and in life. Here we go. Oh, look who it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Always great to see you, my friend. Likewise. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't miss it for all the sunny days in Moncton. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. This is uh, this is quite a rare sunny day for this time of year. But uh... well, If you're from St. John, it'd be rare. But we get a lot of sun here. Our river isn't much to brag about. But, uh, yeah, it's the scene of downtown Moncton, and here we are. It is. It's nice to be here with the man who is, in many ways, the mayor of Moncton, or certainly the, uh, the artistic mayor of Moncton. Yeah, I did an event last night where uh, someone referred to me as a treasure, but I'm worried that someone might try to bury me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what they do with treasure that's, in New Brunswick, don't they? That's yeah, it. The yeah. treasure goes underground somewhere. I, I do, yeah. Wow. I think you're safely uh, above ground for, uh, for many, many more years. I mean, do you, do you still feel the same sense of excitement when you're standing outside the Capitol or indeed any beautiful historic theatre? Um, I, I do think we're very spoiled in this province that we do have the capital and the imperial, the, the, you know, is another one that's no stranger to you in terms of a facility. I guess, I don't know if you call it excitement, but it's a mix of uh, nostalgia, caffeine, and let's get to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I feel the same way. I get the same uh, sense of, of magic and awe and wonder. Why don't we go and uh, fill ourselves with that feeling? Let's go find a chair and have something <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> no, yeah.
as advertised, the Empress Theater. It predates the Capitol by, gosh, uh, 12 years, I think. This, uh, you look up at these, uh, these timbers there, they're, they're, they're date back to 1910, just like a few other elements, of course, so much of it has been redone. At the one time, the Empress was much deeper than it is now. It was a cinema, of course, but uh, this is our, I like to call my rec room on steroids. <laughs> right, because I mean, I mean, this must be the place that not only are, is new talent honed, but also rehearsals and, I mean, what what is the space primarily used for now? Well, I would say, um, performances, but during the dreaded pandemic, it, it became a, a bit of a savior for the Capitol because uh, some arts groups uh, had uh, funding available to them to develop works. We uh, staged a very successful production of the Rocky Horror Show here the year, uh, I believe it was 2018, and we used it very immersive, like, you know, the motorcycle was flying through the air. And wow. It was, um, you know, we, we can put anywhere, you know, sometimes you have 40 people in here, seems like a full house, but we squeezed 200 in here as well, so it gives us a, a great flexibility. And so this was here first, so the capital came next, I mean, so then, so the two coexisted back in the early parts of Yes, so something very bizarre happened in the uh, mid, late 20s into the 30s that this became perhaps the world's first ever cineplex where, and it sounds so pedestrian today to say, oh, you know, you could go and buy a ticket for two different cinemas, but it was featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not in the early 1930s. Did you know in Moncton, Canada, North America, whatever, you know, there is a, a cinema where you can go into a lobby and buy a ticket for two separate movies and two, you know, this was how ahead of the curve Moncton was. We're trying to get back to that curve. <laughs> we're not quite there yet. <laughs> That's we're, amazing. We'll get back to it. You know? So isn't it that Moncton was, was leading the way for modern entertainment as we know it Yeah, uh, a century ago? There you go. Right. Yeah. And of course we, um, we just had our hundreds recently, our hundredth anniversary here at the Capitol. So well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so you now, as artist in residence, it feels like now this is this is your time to uh, to pay tribute to that uh, that incredible legacy. Um, how does it feel to have such an incredible title, and and does it feel nerve wracking to have such a responsibility as an artist in residence for a place that not only means so much to you, but means so much to, to the community and indeed the, the province and region as a whole. Yeah, it's strange that, uh, you're, you know, the ghost has only been around about three times the amount of time I have. I, I came, I, I first worked here in, uh, when the theater reopened in the fall of 93, and then came back in the fall of 96 and have been working in some capacity. It's, it's a bizarre feeling really because the term artist in residence typically uh, denotes someone who is there for a short amount of time. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> and you know, might get a six year, you know, six month residency. So uh, I've been I've been privileged and spoiled to say I've, you know, spent many years here uh, with a little bit of a talent to amuse, but also uh, preoccupied with making people feel good. Right. When you look at the way that you do that for people, does it take you back to, you know, growing up on the North Shore, Il Dalhousie, you know, very proud obviously of you, you know, your Francophone mother, Anglophone father, and and yet, you know, art, an artistic um, life on the stage wasn't necessarily there, you know, if you grew up in, in a mill town, and indeed I know worked in the mill as a student. Um, at what point did you realize that, that you wanted to pursue a life on these boards and was the support there for you um, that you now give to people? Yeah, absolutely. It, which is curious. I mean, I was born in the late 1950s and uh, the years that I grew up, first of all, I didn't know that that was a job. <laughs> I mean, I saw movies, I guess, and I didn't I didn't make the connection that these people who made them mm. or eventually I got to see plays. And I think that's what professional plays and that's what sparked it. Uh, Theatre New Brunswick began in our province in, uh, I believe it was circa 1970. So I would have been about 12 then. And they had this circuit. They would come through and put on these sometimes marvelous plays 
in our community. Yeah. So the, the, first of all, I realized that was a possibility. But secondly, when I announced at age 17 that I was going to university to study theater, I was never discouraged once. People thought, well, that's the natural thing that you should do. Many of us come like I did. I came to it from very much being an introvert, be very much being uh, shy to express myself. Yeah. But realizing that as soon as I could put on the mask of a character or wear a hat or plaid shirt that I might wear, <laughs> you transform into that persona. Right. And that was really where I felt the most comfortable. Right. In fact, you know, I always said I feel more comfortable in front of 800 people pretending to be someone else than I do in front of four people trying to be myself. How did that then form into the, the creation of Lucien? And when did you realize that, that what you wanted to do was to A, create this character? I'm, I'm fascinated by the, the genesis. I, I evolved from that world of studying theater and working in the mill and then working for some theater companies as a young actor, but realizing, geez, I, I just did this six week contract and now I'm out of work and maybe I can get another contract in a few months time, but what do I do in the interim? So it became imperative to me to develop an entrepreneurial side and uh, we formed our own company, uh, which was uh, based in Fredericton in those years, those years called Comedy Asylum. And I tried my hand at writing and. In 1984, New Brunswick was celebrating 200 years of being a province, the only province to have successfully separated, we separated from Nova Scotia right. in 1784. Uh, but so New Brunswick um, was celebrating this event. And so I, we decided to write a show that took the Mickey out of it. And just by accident at the very last second, I said, well, I got this thing there. I just been telling jokes with friends. And I, you know, I kind of wrote this two minute monologue of this character and when the, the show became a hit it was called maritime mixed grill but this character who started out with about three minutes on stage you know just because of the reaction of the crowd and i go and try to write something new and people would react and then it so this thing became 20 minutes long to the point where i was despised by all the other actors <laughs> it's stealing the show yeah. yeah and as you know you know getting married and then eventually you have a family and then this thing comes along or you create that somehow people would want to see in Chilliwack, BC and Regina, Saskatchewan and yeah. Switchblade, Manitoba. So you go to these places and take it around and you know, it really was the, uh, the meal ticket for me as an actor. Yeah. That's amazing. And then how did the, how did you, you know, keep the character, you know, uh, touring for so many years i mean you were obviously writing new shows all the time uh once you know he, lucian became kind of so beloved did did you then feel like you had to uh reinvent the wheel or did you you know kind of roll with current events and and how did you um and again i mean and and still to this day people are kind of yeah, there. It, i'll put it it wasn't my idea <laughs> I, I i really had said Okay, I'm going to do this. It was this Maritime Mixed Grill review in the 80s. And then, and then I developed it into a one-person show in 1986. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I will run it once and I will say goodbye. I will never do this again. <laughs> you know, be careful what you wish for in show business. And what you wish for, I guess, is ultimately a career. And then you realize that, well, wait a minute. I can go to this community and in one night, you know, make more money than I would working five weeks as an actor for this theater company. You think, well, right. there are bills to pay. <laughs> yeah. There are yeah. diapers to put on these these babies. And it's a great motivator, isn't it? You know, to uh, provide for one and, and you know, those that you, those whom you love and, uh, you know, your family as such. The State of the Province Address, which you've done for, I mean, how many years now? I think I'm on my fourth or fifth premiere, so. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So that's, um, so that's coming up with a lot of new material every year. And obviously, I mean, the news guides you. And of course, you obviously uh, write a newspaper column as well. So you are, you know, intrinsically kind of, you know, soaking this up anyway. Uh -huh. But that's still a big gig. Does the pressure get bigger or do you now take it in your stride? I um, I have to say that the biggest challenge, I'm sure you can really, especially when you get 
14, 1500 people in a room is mm. getting their attention. Right. And um, audiences have always been difficult in places like that because they's not like they've bought tickets to be entertained. Right. They, um, they're there because their corporation uh, bought a table or they want to lobby the government in some way. We're not the reason there. We're not the reason uh, they're uh, there. Yeah. But I always find the number one goal when you've asked to do that and like you say, at a wedding, you know, tell tell the truth about the person, and the last will come. You do as you as you get. You have a certain luxury where, you, you know, God bless. You know, he, he's not with us anymore. But if 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 you said Robin Williams was coming, people would be laughing before the show started. Right. And because I managed to fool some of the people some of the time in the past, <laughs> there's kind of a I'm given a wide berth that I can get up there and. Right. You know, fart and people, you know, I, they're I ready to laugh. It's not like you have to tell yourself to a no. corporate crowd that don't know all it. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you just say, Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be here. And they laugh. And it's like, I didn't say anything funny. And so, uh, you know, I. I uh, it's the love of anticipation there. It's like, yeah. oh, What's he going to say? Exactly. Yeah. And and there is that aspect too, is like, Oh my God, I don't believe how you get away with that. Because the one thing you can do can still make fun of politicians there because god bless them they you know they don't deserve it because they, they really do uh, i mean anybody who goes into politics to me is needs to be commended but yeah. it's it, it, their fair game as they say because yes. you know uh, the, then that's the beauty of living in a, in a democracy so I that is really the state of our province and the state of you know comedy in our province and that's why i love it and of course, I mean, I've, I've written about and talked about my love of and appreciation for the Hubcap Comedy Festival many times. Um, can you tell me a bit about how the genesis came about and how you had the idea? And I mean, what kind of lunatic would decide to do a comedy festival that involved bringing in comedians from all over the world uh, in February in Moncton? Well, I was involved, uh, you know, like you stay in a community long enough, eventually they'll ask me to do about everything. So I was on uh, the association of downtown Moncton Centreville. And uh, my great friend, Ken Kelly, who was the executive director of the organization, you know, we, we were, I was president for a year. And then he said, well, what about a comedy festival? And I uh, just took it. But at that time, for me, comedy was we would write these shows that we do in the Empress here, these little sketches and, and have musicians. And we do like a review and more than stand up. And the first couple of years, it really was that. We would have a show that we would mount that be the year that was. And then it became the La Revue Acadienne as well. So there was, it was more sketch based. And we had a hard time at the beginning to try to get stand up comedians because the business 20, Five years ago or 23 years ago is certainly not what it is today in right. terms of the number of people and the, the way the business has evolved. And was there very few professional stand-ups like working for the air? There were really no one in, there was nobody in New Brunswick at that time. Yeah. Well, that's it. And the genius of it, of course, is that A, I mean, the venues are all so close together that, I mean, I, I have run from venue to venue, you know, and again, the, the snow's falling, I'm, I'm wearing my suit, but I'm up to knee, but, but the venue's literally across the road, so you're going to make it, I mean, you yeah. can't not make it. Yeah. But did, did you think it would still be going 20 plus? No, I, I, uh, I mean, it's largely thanks to Robert Gallant, who, or, you know, who's taken the ball and ran with it. And, uh, and I guess eventually you treat people well, which we try to do. We don't, nobody as you know, gets paid fantastically well, but you make a couple of grand for your weekend, your flight's paid, your hotel's paid, you get a toque and <laughs> you know, a blueberry ale from the pump house and you're good to go. <laughs> That's it. Uh, and you just smile and thank people for being here. And How about looking back over your career and not just your time at the, at the capital, but, but over the years, what are the, what are the personal highlights for your own performances, productions, or indeed things that you've directed, what are the moments that really stand out when you uh, look back and feel a sense of pride? I, I, and again, it, for me, it's the things where I have played a hand in creating, but may not have been the central person on the stage. You know, I have to say a big highlight happened very recently with our 100th anniversary. And just to stand in the wings and see that a hundred years to the day we're celebrating this great place that we're sitting in now that um, you know has entertained so many people in so many years and to see that come through fruition and not have to be there as the, in the spotlight uh, is the most gratifying you yeah. know
it's amazing to see so much growth and development in Moncton and I love the, the build it and they will come mentality here. How does it feel for you as, as a person who's made the show Adopted Home and, and, and what's it like to see so much growth and success here? I would say uh, a city has had a tremendous run. I got here in the mid 90s and was impressed by this can-do attitude and a steady economic climb that has really not seen a blip Right. Despite the uh, recent inflation, despite whatever's going on in the world, it's just slow and steady who wins the race. But it's, uh, in Moncton's case, fairly rapid at times as well. So happy to call it home because it, despite it's being the biggest population center in New Brunswick, uh, feels like Dalhousie, the little town I grew up in. People are that friendly, so. Right, yeah. that's, the, that's the sweet spot to get the, the, you know, an arena where you can see UFC and John Mulaney and Russell Peters, but also everywhere you go, you're gonna bump into someone you know. Uh, we just met a woman from the Miramichi carrying a shopping bag that uh, was down slumming it here. So you, you see it all, it's great, it's great. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, how did it feel when you were uh, awarded the Order of New Brunswick? Did that feel like a, a, a real moment for you? I got a little mixed up because I thought uh, they were calling about the odor of New Brunswick. <laughs> I've been sticking up the place for so many years. I don't know. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, as I alluded to, you stay in business long enough uh, and, uh, you know, manage to uh, not get caught with your pants down in an alleyway. Eventually, they'll recognize you for something. <laughs> no, well, not yet, anyway. <laughs> hey, 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 that could happen today. Will they retract the order of New Brunswick? There you go. <laughs> yes, I, I, I could be the first ever to have it, uh, yeah, have it re renounced. Well, if it was going to happen with anyone, it would happen with me, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because where you and I started, we'd heard of this guy who moved to New Brunswick from Britain. And I was, you know, putting together a show for the comedy festival. I had the crazy idea to combine comedy with symphony music. So I said, we need a really good stand up. And then we got together. As you know, this has got to be six years ago or so now, where I said, James, we're going to do this bit that's going to be you transforming into a New Brunswicker. You bought it wholeheartedly. And we came up with a, with a, a you know, a, a, a spoof of that I am Canadian. You and came we, up with the amazing well, it was but genius. now we're at a stage now where yes, you're almost there, yeah. but to complete the makeover, what we're, we need to go with this is no more James. You got to be Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Mulligan. Jimmy Mulligan. Jimmy <laughs> Mulligan. Ditch the blazer. Yeah. Go for the plaid shirt, the Alpine beer, <laughs> and a toque, and you're here, buddy. Damn. Yeah. I mean, that I okay. This is Marshall, this is James, and we are <laughs> New Brunswickers. New Brunswickers, Jimmy Mulligan. <laughs> Watch out, Hubcap Comedy Festival 2023. <laughs> Jimmy Mulligan, plaid, no suit, Alpine, new name. Same old jokes, though. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, there are no new jokes. The transformation is complete. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I mean, if, if there's anyone I can take advice from, it's the man that wrote my signature routine. So that's it. I'm Jimmy Mulligan from now on. <laughs> well, you've given me a piece of advice, which I'm now going to consider using. <laughs> An alter ego. Though. An alter ego, exactly. What would you say to a young performing artist or indeed any artist? about uh, life here and how they can succeed in the Maritimes. Uh, do yourself a favor and do everything you can to make your own work. Um, if, you do, if you do, as various people in various sectors feel, that you, you're owed a favor by the government or somebody or you're griping because things aren't going your way, make them for yourself because there really is no other way. That's all we really have. In this case, we have, we've had each other here for this hour plus that uh, you know we spent and uh, you know we maybe will come up with a routine that we can work together on but uh, find the thing that you want to do and find a way to create the opportunity for yourself it sounds really naive but uh, it's really the only way especially in show business yeah yeah no i couldn't agree more it's been the everything well thank you so much for a really magical day it's been um, inspiring to finally uh get inside your brain because i mean they, we've known each other for now uh, close to nine years, yeah. um, had so many wonderful creative experiences together, but all of these questions that I've always wanted to ask you have been these kind of moments where we're crossing in a dressing room corridor yeah. and, uh, and we only get these few seconds, so thank you for taking the time. And ditto, I've really enjoyed uh, picking your brain in my own way today as well. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it, thank okay. you, Marcel. Appreciate it.
Yep. The patron right. saints of New Brunswick. Let's go buy our tickets for the comedy Let's show. Let's do now. that. Let's do that. Let's go and book uh, get Jimmy Mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an <in> air. <laughs>